All right, so this is the last example when it comes to law of cosines. So we've talked about where we had the two sides in an angle when they had different letters. And now this time we're dealing with just three sides. So A, B, and C, just the sides, and you have to find all the angles. So the first thing we need to do is draw a triangle to show all this information. And again, it doesn't matter how you draw the triangle as long as it's not a right triangle for one. And then two, that sides and the angles match up. That's the important part. So here, I'm going to change things around. I'm going to put A up here, um, B here, and C here, just to do it. And again, it doesn't matter as long as your sides and your angles match up. So hopefully you've heard that the whole time. Not just, wait, I'm just listening to the, um, I'm just watching you do it. Okay, so with each one of these pieces, we know side B is 7. We know side C is 6. And we know side A is 4. And so we need to find, we need to find angle A, angle B, and angle C. And again, once we find the first two angles, the third angle is going to be easy because you just add them up and subtract from 180 and you find the third angle. So here, we're going to have to deal with the law of sine. And it doesn't matter what you start off with, but just make sure that you start off with something. So I just like, again, to start off with the letter A because that's the beginning. So it's up to you if you want to start with A or another letter. You still get the same information. So I'm starting off with my formula with um, angle A. All right, so with that being said there, we're going to fill everything in. So A we know is 4. We square that. We know B is 7, so we square that. And C is 6, so we square that. We're going to put in B again, which is 7. C, which is 6. And then cosine, and we don't know what A is. And again, at this point, we're trying to find an angle A. So that means when we get to the very bottom to find the angle, we have to do the inverse. So again, be prepared for inverse here. All right, so we need to get every, we need to get this part by itself and everything else over here to the other side. So we need to get this by itself. So it means we need to move this 7 squared over, the 6 squared over, and then do all the great stuff. So here I'm going to subtract this from both sides. Oops, 6, 6, 6. Six, 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 six. So here we're doing the same thing on this side, and we're not going to do anything in the calculator yet. We're not going to simplify this down until we get to the ending of it, because that way we don't mess things up or get the wrong answer early on around it, and it not be a whole number but be a, a fraction. And if we round it incorrectly there, the final answer is going to be wrong. So do not do anything in the calculator until the very end. Right, so we subtracted 7 squared from both sides, subtracted 6 squared from both sides, so we got this. And then again, is negative 2 times 7 times 6 times cosine A. So here we're going to divide by negative 2 times 7 times 6. And here again, divide by negative 2 times 7 times 6. That's gone and that's gone. <laughs> And again, we're going to have this wonderful fraction. And it leaves us with cosine A. Cosine A. And so again here, on this step we subtracted. This step we divided. And then here, we're now going to do our inverse. We have to solve for A. So it means we have to do the inverse of both sides to get rid of cosine. And again, whenever we deal with an angle, we have to do the inverse, the inverse trig function. So here the cosine and the cosine inverse cancel each other out, so that with A. And 
Oop, not rig. <laughs> get rid of cosine. You must do the inverse. Remember that's at the end. You don't do that before now. All right, so the last thing is putting that to the calculator and getting an answer. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in the calculator. So again, to fit, get the, the inverse, we do second cosine. So to do the inverse of sine, we do second sine. Do the inverse of cosine, we do second cosine. We do the alpha y equals and get a fraction bar again. Oops, go to. My fault. Alpha y equals. And we put the numbers in exactly as we have it here. Times 7 times 6. So again, it must look exactly like we have it there. Do not try to do anything early because it could throw your answer off. And if it doesn't, then do it your way, and hopefully it works out every time. <laughs> All right, so here, you look at it again. We're talking about whole numbers. So here, that rounds to about 35 degrees. And again, that's approximate, approximately 35 degrees. <laughs> okay, so we have angle A. Yay. It's approximately 35 degrees. So let's go with angle B, just because numerically, oh, alphabetically, that's the next letter. So let's go ahead and, and again here, if you want to, you can go ahead and just do the law of sine and figure out what B and C is. But I want this time just to go back and do the law of cosine one more time, just to make sure you guys can get that part. So we're going to find angle B. And again, you can go back to the law of cosine if you want to. It's up to you. But again, since we're trying to find angle B, well, I'm trying to find, yeah, find angle B, that means we're going to use the B squared one because it's going to end with angle B. See, it ends right there with angle B. And so here, we're going to fill the numbers in again. B we know is 7. A we know is 4. C we know is 6. And then 2 times 4 and 6 again. And then cosine B. And again here, we're trying to get a, B by itself. So that means we're going to have to do the inverse of it. So when it comes to this part, again, we need to move both of these over to the other side before we can do any type of dividing or anything. So we subtract 4 squared and subtract 6 squared from both sides. So we subtract it. Ooh, uh -oh. And these can cancel out. We get negative 2 times 4 times 6 cosine b. All right, and again, all of this is being multiplied by cosine b. So we divide by everything except for cosine b. I won't give up, no, I won't give in Till I reach the end and start again All right, so that cancels out. And so we're left with just cosine b, and that equals this wonderful fraction. And if you notice, the fraction is about the same thing. All we do is just move some of the numbers around. And so this one is not really that long and that hard or arduous of a process to do. You just have to remember, whenever you find an angle, you have to do the inverse. If you're not trying to find an angle, all you need to do is make sure you do the um, the uh, the square root of this, both sides to make sure you get the actual answer you need. So this is really not that bad. It's not really that much work. And so each one of these, law of sines or law of cosines, is really not that bad. Just got to remember when to use what, and then you'll be good. All right, so we did the inverse of both sides. So that means we can get cosine to cancel out, and we're left with just the B right here. And again, we're going to put all of this into the calculator. And 
And let's go ahead and put that in the calculator again just to make sure everybody knows how to put it in correctly. Let's move it to this side this time. And here, instead of having to type everything all over again, let's do second enter and pull it back up. And let's just change numbers that we need to change. So the 7 needs to go to a 4. And the 6 stays. The 7 goes to a 4 again here. And then the 4 goes to a 7. Right, and so see, it matches up exactly what we have here on the screen. So this matches up with what we have right here. And then we hit enter because we're already, we're already in degree mode. So we're already good with that part. All right, so we get about approximately 86 degrees. <laughs> approximately. Okay, so going up to our triangle, we're going to put 86 in here for B. And then the last one for C, all we have to do is just add A and B together and subtract from 180, and we get angle C. So we're going to find angle C. And we know that's A plus B plus C equals 180. And so here we know A is 35. We know B is 86. C is what we're trying to find. So if we add these two up, that's 5 and 6 is 11. That's 11 and 121. So it's 121 altogether. We subtract that from 180. What does that give us? So I guess it's about 59 degrees, right? Right. So that is angle C, 59 degrees. Okay, so that's all there is. So again, you could have did the law of cosine twice. You could do the law, or you could have done the law of cosine and then law of sine. It's up to you. So I've showed you both ways of doing it, and it's up to you how you want to do it. I'm not going to mandate that you have to do it this way because if another way works better for you, do that. But if this works for you, do this way. Do what I just did. All right, so these are the answers again. And we are done. And I'm going to give you a practice. And that's all it is for law of cosines.